We've been talking about this for some time, the big swings in FX and bond markets while equities have stayed considerably less volatile. I want to get more on this phenomenon with Mandy Shu, uh, the chief equity derivative strategist at Credit Suisse. Mandy, great to have you with us. Thanks, we're Melissa. Just, great to be here. We are just talking with Rick about the, the volatility that we've seen in the currency markets. We've seen it basically in a lot of assets except for equities. Is there, should there be some sort of convergence? Is, is there an implication that that volatility in the equity market should pick up, or does that not have to happen? Yeah, no, you bring up a great point. Um, you know, I think the volatility in currencies and bonds, um, that's not surprising given the macroeconomic backdrop that we have, right? The, you know, huge amounts of uncertainty around the inflation outlook, the growth outlook around monetary policy. What has surprised a lot of investors um, is just the lack of relative lack of volatility in the equity market, particularly if you look at the VIX, right? The VIX remaining in the 20 to 30 range, it's pretty muted compared to both cross-asset volatility as well as a degree of the S&P drawdown that we have seen this year. Now, I would say on the surface, it might appear as kind of a sign of complacency, perhaps the equity markets not pricing in risk, um, you know, uh, as much as the other asset classes, but actually it's more a reflection of positioning and the fact that a lot of equity investors have already de-risked significantly. You know, if you look at institutional investors, particularly I would say U.S. equity hedge funds, and if you look at their net exposure, their gross exposure, all of that is at multi-year lows. So investors have already sold out of their stocks and shifted to cash, right? And why that matters for volatility is, Obviously, if you, you know, if you shift to cash, if you move to cash, you do not need to spend money to buy puts, put protection, right? And that historically has been what, um, what you know, drives the VIX. So the lack of protection buying that we're seeing um, is, I would say, one of the primary reasons why, you know, the VIX and equity volatility overall still remain relatively muted. Hey, Mandy, it's Tim. Uh, you're talking about playing defense. How about playing offense? And, and to me, uh, forget equity, folks. How about global macro funds that are actually going after Italy? Uh, when, you know, Ten years ago or so, when I was running an EM long short equity fund, uh, the, the Draghi influence and his ability to step forward actually uh, prevented a major, major sovereign crisis across Europe, although we had one. Um, I don't see anything different here. And in fact, I think this is what we started this, this segment with. I, I, I think it's going to get worse. Uh, are you seeing funds positioning to actually be aggressive? This is one of the best times I can remember in my investing lifetime to be a global macro fund. And in fact, I think they're hard at work here. Yeah, so I, I do think the consensus trade within the MAC community is certainly, you know, the continued widening in Italian bond yields relative to German, right? So to play that weakness in the peripheral economies. Um, within equities, I would say, you know, the, the trade that we've been pitching that we still really like is looking for further downside in European equities, right? Europe is the region that is most at risk to all of these macro factors we're talking about, right? Rising commodity prices, energy shock, right? Tightening monetary policy, a slower growth, recession, et cetera. Uh, and then the trade that we particularly like is looking at downside in says, which is the U.S. ETF that tracks European stocks. And the reason why we really like that is because you get a exposure, not just to the stock component, but also to the currency component, right? So looking at downside um, uh, puts in Fed, you would benefit from both a sell-off, continued sell-off in European equities, as well as a continued weakening in the euro on the back of all of these geopolitical um, and economic risks. Manny, I just had a follow-up um, on the positioning in U.S. equities. If investors have largely de-risked and have moved to cash, what are the implications of that to the notion of a bottom in the U.S. stock market? So I think the, 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 so I'll say two, two things that, that, that's important to keep in mind. So one is, you know, we talked earlier about this convergence and then potentially in cross-asset volatility. Um, I don't think that's likely, right? So because of this deleveraging that we've already seen in terms of positioning, I think we could see further downside in stocks without that explosion and volatility that everyone's kind of anticipating or talking about. Um, in terms of when stocks will bottom, bottom, I think it's going to be when the Fed pivots, and I don't think the Fed is going to pivot anytime soon. So you know, I expect inflation numbers to remain still elevated, and the fact that the Fed is targeting headline inflation to be at 2%, that's the Fed telling us as clearly as it can uh, that it's willing to drive us into a recession, because that's the only way we're going to get headline CPI uh, to 2%. So I think there's still more downside to come in terms of stocks. All right. Mandy, good to see you. Thank you.
Mandy Shu, Credit Suisse.